738 men and women total. Seven of them, a combined seven, make a profit. How'd you like to be in that business? You will hear that the UFC is the biggest organization out there. How come? How come? What do they do so well? Unified rules are the same anywhere we go. Weight classes are the same anywhere we go. A lot of the talent is the same. Kind of shift them around. Cage sure looks similar. Camera's a camera. Why is the UFC number one in the world? Well, because of those seven athletes. 738 under contract. Seven of them that can make you money. That's a lot. Boxing has three guys right now. Just so you understand. I won't call promotions out. One of the top promotions has none. They're still looking for them. The other promotions got two. And the leader next to the Ultimate Fighting Championship has four. So UFC is number one. Not because of the cage or the rules of the weight class. Not because of how they film it or present it or where they walk them out or how they weigh them in. All things that are discussed. They're number one because they have the most stars, which, by the way, is a combined seven. 43 events a year, you got seven people that can make money, and they are going to feed everyone. Not only on the card, on the roster, in the offices, in the real estate, in the market, in anything that you do, you yourself, the promoter, you got seven people, you got 738, 731 of them are a loss. You got seven that are going to make this whole thing make sense. Now, when you have one of those guys, who turns the gun on you. What do you do? What do you do? You have a guy in Leon Edwards where the story is all around him. We're all just the whole goddamn world's discussing it and apparently he didn't hear. We've been discussing it for five years. He is great. He can't draw. He is talented. He can't sell. So instead of cutting him and turning him loose, you just keep dumping money into him. And he's got good company. He's got 730 other people just like him. With seven people keeping the lights on. That finally one day changes. It changes through all the investment. You had to fight. You had to shove it down people's throat. You had to bring them up slowly. You had to get them in there with Nate Diaz, which isn't easy to do considering one's a star and one's not. You got to get them all over the world. You got to deal with the rules of a country he lives in during a worldwide pandemic. You do it all and you turn that ship around. And he, standing in England, in a building that you paid for, that you insured, and that you filled with his friends. He looks around, he hears those cheers, he looks down at that belt, he looks up into that microphone, and he informs you that he's now in charge. All the money you've lost, all the time you've lost, everything you've put into this guy, now is the moment where you can start to get it back. Very rare. 730 other guys that don't understand this got their hand out wanting more, going this away and wanting more, kicking you on your way down, not even understanding. Okay, fine. You keep a smile, you keep your head up, and you try to move forward. But what do you do? I mean, honestly, what are you going to do in that situation? Well, the reason that I'm the best at what I do, I am very smart, and I appreciate when you guys say I'm very smart, but my real skill is just as a historian. You could take the time and go ask Google, or you could just speak to me. So the most recent time that we were in this exact same position was a gentleman named Francis Ngannou. We were heading to a place called Houston, Texas, and we were going to headline 
the biggest star in Houston, Texas, considering that's where the venue was, and that's who we want on the marquee so we can do the local radio stations, and his name's Derek Lewis. And it was decided, for whatever reason, that Francis wasn't going to fight him. And I've heard different things. I've said different things, and I've even gotten people pushing back. Oh, that's not why he did it. I, you know what? I don't care why he That's why I don't know it. That's why I keep saying it wrong. I'm not going to take the time to learn it. And if I do go learn, I'm not going to take the time to remember it. I don't care. You showed up or you did not show up. And he didn't show up. And this wasn't very long after he won the championship. Just to take you guys back. It's a very similar situation. We have Houston, we're main eventing Derek, and we're going to do a title fight. So either the guy at heavyweight that's got the title comes, or we find someone else. And they did. They found someone else. His name was Surreal Gone. Heavyweight. Who fought Derek in Houston for the championship. So I'm just sharing this with you as we go through this deal with Leon. If this is a game... To get headlines. Well done. You got me. Nobody's got a bigger show than me. I just gave you a plug for free. You got me. And you only got me because I think that you're serious. If you're not, truly, excellent work. But the guy that can make you the most money isn't even a close. It's, it's not a close debate. We don't need a poll. We don't need to go to the for underground forum. I don't need to go to my YouTube and post a survey. The guy that can make you the most money is Colby Covington. The guy that's going to draw and is going to get you the most media is Colby Covington. Leon's under a brand new contract. You got to give him a little bit of wiggle room. Perhaps he doesn't know. Right, some guys are such competitors, they just get out there and compete. They work really hard and they, they've got some trust with their team. They just get out there and go. I, I, I don't say that as a backhanded compliment. Perhaps he doesn't know. Perhaps he doesn't know and understand the participation that he gets for being the headliner that brings the belt, not that leaves with it, that brings it. And within 30 days, should everybody pass drug tests, he's going to find out the very pleasant way. The very, very pleasant way. And I believe that his opinion will then instantly change, and he will see... We're taking on the guy that draws and gets the most interest, is the most helpful. And if he doesn't, I don't think we have to look back very far. I don't think that we have to wonder. It just happened. It's the heavyweight class. It was Derek Lewis. It was Francis Ngano. It was contested. We called it interim. We brought in Surreal Gone. And I just gave you guys a very brief history lesson that just happened. Most of you forgot. None of you cared. None of you were disrupted. That arena was sold out. And this next one will be too. And it will be for a championship. Just as planned. And all you are as the champion is the first one that we invite. But if you turn us down, then have our little party anyway. 